I'm on a job at the moment by myself and I thought I'd spend a few moments of my time just going through my camera bag so you can get an idea of what a guy like me as a pro photographer uses on a day-to-day -day basis for real estate architectural shoot. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into it, okay? So first of all, this is the property I'm gonna be shooting. It's a nice little property. Um, it's a real estate shoot, but the property itself is actually managed accommodation. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm approaching it as a real estate shoot. I've got approximately two hours to get this whole job shot, floor plan, everything done, and then get back out of here before uh, the new guests come in. So very quickly, my camera today, D750 Nikon, 14 to 24 f2.8 lens, beautiful combination. And no, I've never had a problem with my D750. Great camera, perfect resolution, uh, no exposure problems. Uh, I think a lot of that stuff's overrated. People harp on about recalls and all that kind of crap. But you know, honestly, this camera works beautifully. It has a perfect resolution, resolution, full frame for me. 24 megapixels, spot on, okay? 14 to 24 mil lens, beautiful, nice, sharp lens. I only use a 14 to 24 because it's sharper than the 16 to the 35. Otherwise, yeah, you know, an F4 lens would be fine. Godox X1 trigger, that's the trigger my flashes. And the tripod is an Enduro, CLT, something or other, 403, carbon fiber. So this thing, honestly, light as a feather. The heaviest thing on my tripod is that 14 to 24 mil lens. That thing is a beast. Uh, it probably weighs more than the whole tripod. Okay, flashes, primary flash, I'll get to that in a second. My uh, backup flash at the moment is a Nikon SB, SB80DX, which is a slave flash. I use it as a slave flash. That's just a backup. My other two Godox flashes are currently uh, in no man's land, somewhere between getting repaired and uh, being rejected by Godox because they started to melt down. Uh, so I don't have my other two radio flashes, which is a pain in the butt. My primary flash, Godox 8200, I'll get that bag out of the way. Godox 8D200. Uh, so far, I think this is a pretty good flash. I'm going to do a proper review on this flash soon, actually. I, I quite like it. Uh, it's a big flash, a lot of power. I'm using the bare bulb with the dome. This arm, if I step back a bit, I'll show you that the pole. So that pole is a, uh, a small, cheapo light stand I bought on eBay. And I pulled the center column of the light stand out. Uh, I've kept the legs. I didn't chuck them away. I kept them. And that gives me a nice... Oh, approximately two foot long pole so I can hold that AD 200 right up into a high ceiling if I need to Gives me a fair bit of flexibility. Okay In my bag. Well, I've already started to strip my bag down. So I'll go through it I'll start with my lenses So the extra lenses I carry first of all, I've got two primes. I've got a a 35 uh, 1.8 G and underneath that I've got a 50 mil uh, 50 mil 1.8 G as well they're both great lenses, sharp, and honestly, those two primes are quite light, and they hardly take up any space in my bag. Honestly, if you stand back and you have a look, that's not a huge amount of spot for two lenses, 35 and 50 mil. And also with DX crop mode and Nikon cameras, you can get, I mean, 75 mil with your 50, you can get, a, I mean, I'm not going to go 50 with the 35, but you know what I'm talking about. Next to that, I've got the 70 to 200 F4 G, great lens, sharp versatile and it's light being the f4 model it's much lighter than the f2.8 so it's much more portable um, and it doesn't add too much weight to my bag so those those three lenses excellent i don't use them all the time but very very useful uh, the next lens is my 24 millimeter pc lens and this is a great lens gets me out of some sticky situations from time to time where i need to shift up and down which happens more often than you think um, prior to owning this lens, I used to just zoom out and crop, crop back into the photo. But this lens allows me to use, you know, the full 24 megapixels of the D750 without having to crop. So I can, you know, shift up and down to get those roofs in, or even shift down if the house is below street level. It's a very handy lens to have. I mean, it's expensive. You're not, you might not want to get one straight away when you first start doing this kind of work, but very useful. I've also got this today. I'm doing some virtual tours today. So I've got an uh, Sigma 8mm fisheye which I'm pairing with my backup body, which is this Nikon D810. Beautiful camera, love a D810. Excellent, excellent shadow detail, excellent dynamic range. I used to use a Canon 5D2, and it used to irritate me when the shadows always had banding in it, and you know, 
people say, oh, just expose properly, just shoot properly. And look, honestly, uh, HDR is part of what I do. And being able to stretch files and not have ugly banding and artifacts in the shadows is a godsend, let me tell you. So that's in there. I've got, well, I've got one of those. Everything, everyone should have one of those. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got, this is my bits and pieces bag. It's got my cards in it. Compact flash and SD cards, screwdrivers, and a few other odds and ends. I um, also carry that tool kit for my tripod. And I carry my Sekonic light meter, which I use fairly frequently. And I've also got my Black Rapid strap. I love this strap. So if I'm walking around shooting um, on a ladder or something, and just shooting some exteriors handheld with a D810 or D750, I'll carry it around with that. So it's very handy. Also use these little uh, thingies that come with your low pro bags. Um, I, I strap those on my belt and I use them to hold my flash. I've actually got one on the moment and uh, I use those basically like that, okay? So that helps me carry around my spare flash. So my, my backup flash is attached to my waist and I can just walk around with my big flash like this, my AD200 um, and uh, my tripod camera gear. Okay, so that's pretty much my setup. That's basically what I use on a day-to-day -day basis to shoot all my real estate um, work. Uh, that hasn't changed much over the years, but I have added a lot of, you know, just little bits and pieces as you add over the years. Now, the only thing I think uh, probably warrants a little bit more explanation is just the lens choices, okay? Some people would probably say, why wouldn't you just carry a 14 and a 24 and then a 24 to 70, you know? Uh, why carry the 35? Why carry the 50? Um, why even carry the 70 to 200? Well, 70 to 200, actually, that, that is a lens that does come in handy. In my area, there's some geographical places in my area with mountains and things like that with real estate where uh, you, you got to pick up views. And um, I've used the 70 to 200 many times um, to get uh, views, city views from properties. Um, and also to shoot birds, believe it or not. So just native birds and things like that. Um, and just little details in houses that, uh, you know, you really need a, uh, a nice long telephoto to get um, a good shot of. With the 35 to 50, the rationale behind that is basically, you know, a 70 to 200, sorry, a 24 to 70 mil lens, f2.8. They're actually quite big lenses. They're big and they're heavy. This 35 and this 50 millimeter together, they probably weigh about half of a, you know, a professional 70, 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. You know, they're big lenses. A 24 to 70 would take up probably more space than even this 70 to 200, you know, because they're fatter. Having bigger elements are actually fatter lenses, so they, they take up more sideward space in your bag. They have bigger front elements, obviously. They're just much heavier. I mean, look at the, the 14 to 24 compared to my 35. I mean, the 14 to 24 is, a, is quite a large lens. You know, you compare it side by side. But what you can't compare is the weight. You know, the, the 35 millimeter probably weighs one quarter of my 14 to 24 because of the massive elements in the 14 to 24 because it's f2.8. Um, and, you know, I mean, changing lenses to a prime lens when you're shooting real estate job, you know, it's not that much of a pain in the butt. And it's not like I'll shoot a shot at 24 and then change to 35 and then change to 50 and then change to a 7200. I don't do that at all. Um, there are times when I have to shoot a front shot and I can't get it at 24 mil. So I stick on the 35 and it does a job. There's even been times where I've had to use a 50 mil to get a, a, an external shot because I've had to go across a road. And there's even been times when the road was a four lane road and I've literally had to use my 70 to 200 to get a decent front shot of a house, okay? That does happen from time to time. So I find these lenses quite handy. Uh, yeah, look at 24 to 70, the range, you know, having all that in one lens is a handy thing. Uh, but for me, the, the weight considerations, the 24 to 70 would probably weigh, um, <laughs> you probably almost weigh the same amount as these three lenses combined. Probably not, but it'd be close. And, uh, and, and, you know, there's not that much more packy, like not much more weight and not much more space taken by these lenses. And they're prime lenses, you know, I love the look of prime lenses. I was actually on a real estate shoot last week where the owner wanted, um, sorry, the real estate agent wanted a detailed shot of the entry of this house because they had a really nice entry with a nice kind of sideboard with a mirror and some stuff on it. It was really nice and she wanted a nice shot of that. So I actually used my 35 at, uh, I think it was F2. So I got a nice shallow depth of field, and it captured the feeling of this hallway. It was actually, it was a beautiful shot. And it was sharp as a tack where, where it was in focus was sharp as a tack because the 35mm is such a sharp lens. 
but having that extra shallow depth of field really allowed me to just focus in on this um, this sideboard and have the door kind of go into a really nice blur in the background and it was such a really nice shot that kind of gave you a nice warm feel of this house so it wasn't just showing the space it was actually giving you a nice warm feeling that this is a welcoming house um, a, a great place to you know to raise a family so um, that's kind of the rationale behind these lenses. So anyway, yeah, I'm not going to waffle on any longer. These, are, this is a gear I use on a regular basis, day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and like I say in all, all my videos, if you've got any questions about what I use and why I use it, I'm happy to talk about it in the comments section. Um, and also I'm going to be talking a bit more about this flash coming up soon. I'm going to do a little bit of something, like a review or something on this flash. I really want to, um, let you guys know how it works for me. And I'm going to be re doing a review on my V862s, which melted down, and uh, hopefully get Godox to do something about it. But I'm not very confident, because I've heard Godox has terrible customer service, and I'm experiencing that terrible customer service firsthand. Anyway, that's it. That's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you liked looking through my bag, and I hope it helped you. More than anything, I really hope that helped you, um, and I hope my rationales kind of answered some questions for you. But if not, feel free to ask in the bottom. Otherwise, see you next time. Cheers.